Welcome to Down the Rabbit Hole, a podcast brought to you by Justice. Yep. I'm Aiden. I'm Cody. I'm Stefan. <laughs> and uh, we're missing one. <laughs> yeah, you and may have noticed. Yeah. We're down a member at the moment. Yeah, unfortunately, Elijah had to work <clears throat> today on the last podcast of the year, the New Year's podcast. Yeah, man, that sucks. Yeah. I know. And um, this year, we're, we're celebrating by passing around a little joint. Yeah. Luckily, we live in a, a legal state, California. We're not much of drinkers, so... Figured this is how we'd celebrate during the podcast today. Yep. And, you know, we want to take a look back at the year as well. So, uh, I actually have up right now, it's the Google Trends for the, the top searches of 2018. Mm, that's going to be and, interesting. And, uh, you know, on the topic of joints and everything, something really interesting, you know, with legalization is just the number three searched for thing in the U.S. for food is CBD gummies. Really? I've never yeah. heard of like, like, that's the number one... Cannabis related search or no? That's the number three food related search. Food related. Yeah, CBD gummies. Wow, that's interesting. Actually. That's not even like THC or anything because yeah. THC gets between... you high, but yeah. CBD is like the thing that has like the medical properties. Right, it's more of the relaxation aspect. Yeah, that's so, that's really interesting. So people are getting very curious about that. That's cool. You know, I, I'm happy that. The what, what what is that for? The U.S. or for the, the United world? States? Okay, cool. Well, yeah, I'm happy the U.S. is warming up to the idea of cannabis a little bit. It's about time. Yeah, the no- yeah. the number two search for food though doesn't surprise me. It's a romaine lettuce. Romaine. Did, oh yeah, we just had that recall, recall not yeah. too long ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. I work at a restaurant, so uh, people were out of their Caesar salad for for a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the number one it is unicorn cake. Bad. Wait, what? what? Unicorn cake. Number one what? what? Number one food search. What is that? Is you, what, I think I've never even cake. heard of that. I think unicorn cake is the cakes where, like, um, it's, like, just, like, a white cake, and you cut it open, and it's, like, all, all colorful on the inside. Like, oh. let, me, let me try to bring up a search, because I want to, I'm curious if that's That's correct. the number one food uh, Google search. Interesting. Oh, no, it is literally... <coughs> Unicorn cake. Oh. It's a cake that looks like a unicorn. It's kind of random. So this has been trending all year and we like missed it? Uh, I don't <laughs> know. I, I have not once heard about this cake. Me neither. <laughs> Cody's on the search for us. Out of all yep. the things I'm baking with my girlfriend right now, you think I'd come across one of these recipes. You guys are doing a lot of baking oh, like for the seven, holidays? Eight different recipes, dude. It's insane. It's fun though. You know, it... It has, it seems like it had pretty consistent searches throughout the year, (laughs) (laughs) but it really peaked in like July. Really? Can I see a picture of the uh, unicorn cake actually? Oh, so it, it's like it's, it's legit literally a unicorn cake. A cake, a unicorn. That, yeah, that's okay. a cake. It's like a, it's like one of the the normal round cakes, but it just has like eyelashes. And a horn and ears coming out of it. Yeah. That's actually, that's kind of cool, though. I'm down for that. Yeah, me too. What was your guys' um, speaking of this past year? We'll just go over that first. Look yeah. how this past year was. But, um, do you guys have any favorite movies? If you, okay, how about this? If you had to say your favorite movie of the year, what would it be? If you had mm. to single it down to one. You know, that's really difficult. Because... I think the thing that makes it even harder is, like, you have to think, like, crap, did that movie come out 2018? Dude, totally. That's me right now. I'm flipping like, through yeah, them all in my head. I have I'm like, no oh. idea. Because, yeah. like, I, I didn't see the Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. You know, I still I haven't seen have Black to say Panther. That's my yeah, I was actually going to say, if I have to be honest, that's probably the one that I saw this year that was on my mind the most. Like, yeah. it had me thinking the most after it's I watched so it. Good. It had me thinking the most before I watched it. And I, I might have seen better movies this year that didn't come out this year but i've seen it for the first time but i think i would have to go with infinity war for my favorite movie that came out 2018 yeah i'm bringing up a list right now of like 2018 movies to see black panther came out this year didn't it yeah i haven't seen that that yet either that one was a good movie too so i think (laughs) that was one of the top movies this year if not the top movie deadpool 2 I actually that just out? watched oh, that Oh, Deadpool movie. 2, yes. Oh, that I was just an watched that movie, movie the other day. That, that was movie awesome. was too good. That was awesome. All I can remember is superhero humor. movies. But I think Deadpool superhero 2... Superhero landing coming up? <laughs> I guess Deadpool 2 being the only one I've seen 
kind of has to be my favorite 2018 movie. <laughs> well, did you now genuinely you enjoy it? it? I did. That movie was amazing. Like, it was too good. No, yeah. Like, it, it was really good. It was, I'm excited for the sequel. Because yeah. the world building in that movie, that I think was the key. They, oh, yeah. Because, you know, all these Avengers movies, all these superhero movies, it can it can be a drag to some people. I mean, I, I freaking love it. They're very but, serious. Like, mm-hmm. they, they have their comedy to it, but the overall plot is extremely serious. Yeah, and they, they build this whole new world with fantastic colors and... And, uh, and traditions and it's so interesting and it makes you feel like you're like in the pages of a comic book you know what I mean I think they did a really, like uh, another movie I admire for that it didn't come out this year but um, remember Avatar yeah the world building in that oh movie. yes not yes. the last Airbender yeah no that's what I thought at first I was like what are <laughs> the you the one with the blue they girl. really need to remake the last Airbender yeah movie. oh man don't even get me started but I tell you what they uh, I believe Netflix is making yes. a Avatar? <coughs> is it a reboot? Well, it's gonna be a live action TV show. Yeah. I think. Oh shoot! Really? When is that yeah. supposed to come yeah. out? And it's from I'm like the sure. original creators are gonna be working oh, on. I'm yes. gonna be so stuck on that show. Yeah. Because they've they've actually come out and said they want it to like make up for the movie. Like they've they've actually said that they they're trying what to is, make up for the movie. What does M Night Shyamalan have to say about all of this? Honestly, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> there you go. That's a good response. Like, I used to at least talk, like, he, his I'm movies actually... were okay, but after he did Last Airbender, he's just like, oh, his name's crossed off the list for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. This was, um, also the year I became, I want to, I think I'll say fan of Elon Musk. I mean, I've always, you know, I, he's been popping around, I've always known of him. Yeah. But I gotta like say, out. after that... That's cool. After that Joe Rogan podcast that he was on, oh yeah, I still have to watch it. That, that, watch that it. was an amazing podcast. <laughs> I learned so much about him, like as a person, and just man, the things he said about artificial intelligence. Mm, yeah, a lot of you know, <coughs> a lot of things I learned from uh, Elon Musk this year are actually some ideas that came up for the podcast that we've yeah. been doing this year. Yeah, that's so cool. that was a big part of my year learning. Yes, and yeah, I, have, I think I have to say I want to just continue that that into the next year. Learning, I, it just I feel like I've been opening my mind so much more to things lately. You know, yeah, yeah. it's it's always just life is a process, and you always sometimes. just gotta go mm-hmm. forward and upward. Mm-hmm. So, what was your guys' um favorite vlog we made this year? Because we started vlogging for the first time this year. Yes, yes. and it's been a blast. Although I've been having fun, yeah. I really have. Yeah, I love it. I, I I'm the one who does most of the editing for the vlogs so so i have to say i i love doing it so much because you know editing the podcast is it's easy it's just one sound and it's putting sound and visual together and then a beginning and intro done you know what i mean there's Mm -hmm. not much creative creativity i can add to it but with the the vlogs i'm totally learning my style of video editing and I'm kind of coming up with my own way of doing things and, you know, getting inspiration from other people. And I'm loving it. I'm really, really loving it. It's this passion that I totally didn't even realize I had. You know, mm. I, I've always been making videos since high school. I made them for, like, the rallies. And I remember, kind of yeah. yeah. I remember you but it was just those. always something I did because I figured out how to do it from being in love with YouTube. But yeah. I never had a reason to make videos. So that was my first reason, was for school. Oh, excuse me. And then, you know, after we graduated, a few years passed, and then finally, this year, we start our YouTube channel. And we talked about it for a long time, us wanting to make a YouTube channel. A long time. We've tried we just... things even here and there. Yeah. And it, I think the YouTube channel mm-hmm. started oh, because good. we wanted a way to get our music out there. Yeah, because with the studio time videos. Yeah, recording yeah. is super hard. It. it for us, especially when it comes to the financial part of it, you know, because, oh, yeah. you know, not that we have high standards, but I mean, I guess we do. Being Good. a musician, that's okay. You know what yeah. I mean? I think it's okay to, to have high standards for your music. And we just, yeah, cause it's like, we it's already baby. went through one person that we recorded with and we didn't like it very much and we paid a lot of money and just the way it came out, it totally didn't even sound like us anymore. Yeah. And we're really happy <clears throat> with it. So this year we said, you know what, let's... Let's take a break from looking for someone to record us, and let's just start trying to learn how to record ourselves. Yeah. Not very good at it yet. Yeah. But, I mean, 
We're getting for, there. Yeah, our first two videos. Yeah, we're getting pretty good, Soul I think. Soul Touch and What Do You For Where We Came From. Yeah. I think they're pretty good. We have an, a new strategy going at our next Studio Time video with oh, recording yeah. it. Mm. We're even bringing my uncle in now. Um, yes. My uncle Byron, he's going to he's gonna try to edit the music yeah, for us. Yeah, mix it for us. Yeah. yeah. She's, so, you know, n lots of new stuff coming around. We're going to... Oh, yeah. We're going like, to make a, a new Studio Time video for that. Yep. Thinking. Thinking. Is the name of the song. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah. The videos this year have been so exciting. They've, they've been getting me so excited for the future. Oh, yeah, you know? me too. Like, I think my favorite <laughs> vlog has to be the, uh, the Christmas one, though. Mm. Yeah, that, that one was, was such fun. a fun one. Yeah. I forgot this whole conversation started with me asking what was everyone's favorite vlog. It's huh? alright. <laughs> but hey, that's down the rabbit hole, right? Exactly. So what was your favorite vlog? I'm going to have to say the sailboat. Yeah? Just sailboat. because just because the experience yeah. I had making it was, it was incredible. I think I totally and we need, agree with you, actually. And Cody, you need to go. I know I you know, didn't I get need to make to it last time, but like if you ever get a chance to go sailing anywhere, mm -hmm. I recommend it. Yeah. Highly recommend it. Yeah, it was it's my really first time sailing, too. It's fun. Yeah, I, mean, it's, it, I mean, it's like... Sometimes not peaceful coming. I mean, sometimes you're sideways and you think you're gonna tip, We're but like sideways. you're not. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's fun. It's thrilling. See, yeah. I didn't even really fully understand what I was getting myself into, like, cause Stefan just kind of told me a few days before, hey, we're gonna uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to the bay, visit my dad, maybe go out on the boat a little bit, yeah. this and that. And I was like, oh, cool. You know what? That'll that'll be good for a vlog. I'll bring the camera. And we'll get some cool footage. Mm -hmm. And. Little did I know that, man, we were out there on a legit sailboat. Dude, we were out there yeah. for like six, six seven, seven hours, How big dude, is his boat? All day. And I, dude, it's a good I mean, it's, I mean compared to the boats out there, it's not that big. But, yeah. but I mean, it's a it's big, a, I mean, it's a pretty, si it's a pretty good size sailboat. I mean, it fits. Yeah. It, well, we had like. How many of us slept like in it that seven, night? Like three or four? Yeah, there's like three beds in there. But like what the one in the back is like really big. So you can fit like two yeah. people on it if I you mean, really want. I mean, it's tight, but it's it's good size for what yeah. it is. You yeah. Know? Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But yeah, that was super fun, man. That was an awesome experience this year, learning to sail. I really can't wait to go again. And and another thing um, I want to try maybe this coming year is uh, deep sea fishing. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Dude, my dad actually just hit me up Dude, because... I, he met someone that just got a, <clears throat> like one of those bigger really? boats or whatever. Yeah, and he wants to take dude, us deep sea fishing. My dad has a deep so. sea fishing pole. Hmm. It's like an old one too. It's nice. Does Hopefully that happens. He uses it for catfishing sometimes. Really? Yeah. Oh, are they more? Like, I assume they're more heavy duty. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. The line on them is thick. Like well, it's yeah. not efficient, dude. It's crazy. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. So, speaking of this coming year i want to deep sea fish there's a lot of things i want to do but i mean what do you guys got coming um i don't know i'm working on year. i'm working on building a wood shop really at my yeah. house yeah we have in like a, a table saw and like a miter saw and everything yeah i want to start like building stuff that's cool man yeah i took a i took wood shop in junior high and it was seriously one of the coolest things i ever did it's so some of my favorite memories still go back to that that's one two that was the time in my life when i was starting to realize that i like to create yeah. you know what i mean that was when we started to really dig deep into music together that's when i started to just really decide hey you know what Ada, i think you have a brain that wants to <laughs> make stuff yeah yeah it's so we have a mark on the awesome. world Heck yeah, yeah. it's one of the funnest things to work with too like it's, it can be it's difficult relaxing. but yeah yeah it's super fun at least i think it's relaxing i mean some people might get frustrated like one <laughs> thing that i i frustrates me with it though is like they always say measure twice cut once for me it's always like measure twice cut once measure it again <laughs> cut two more times <laughs> measure it to make sure it's right then it's good yeah yeah and then reconfigure <laughs> the next uh piece to yeah fit whatever and then change up all my cal was. yeah change all my calculations <laughs> for the entire project of because of yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah man that's the fun of it like honestly I, actually, I haven't really thought about mine like to yeah. be honest i do kind of want to take a like uh, i want to advance my drumming a little more try to try to get deeper into it and yeah. get a yeah. little more technical you know <clears throat> i totally kind of want to just taught myself with um tightening everything man with yeah. music oh, like yeah. especially i i want a vocal coach so bad but That'd be awesome. I just, you know it's hard to start searching for one. I don't really yeah. know where to start. It's, 
I don't know. It's kind of nerve wracking, if I'm being honest. I feel you. And it can be. But it's yeah. something I know I, I need and I want to do. You know, because anything I ever learn is just videos from YouTube or trial and error. You know, so it'd be yeah. nice to have someone there that knows what they're talking about and can actually give me like legit advice. Like and like and legit criticism. real time feedback. Exactly. Yeah. I also exactly. want to find my kit this year. Oh, oh yeah. I still haven't found like my kit. What? I'm sorry, what brand kit are you using these days? It's not a crush anymore, right? No, I just got rid of that one. The fucking crush. I don't even know what you have now. I can't remember what it is. Is it a pearl? It's a, it pearl. a pearl. Oh, okay. I I just, yeah, it's, it's pearl. pretty new. Because so I, I can think to, of the, uh, it's a the kick. Yeah, it says pearl yeah. on it. Mm. Pearl's a good brand, though. Yeah, it, yeah, is. it is. I, honestly, I personally want a DW, though. Oh, oh DW. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that's one, I kind of want to lean towards one of those. Are you thinking you want... A similar setup to what you have now? Or you want to go bigger, smaller? I want to I want to go a little bigger with my cymbals and, and uh, a little different, more drums. I want a couple different sound blocks and probably should get a cowbell. The drummer doesn't have a cowbell. You're still <laughs> thinking of doing like a rack? Oh yeah, I, I definitely want to get a big cymbal rack and I want to yeah. get some splashes. I'm I'm getting, I don't even know if I want to tell you guys yet. What I want. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. some surprises for yeah, the kid. Yeah, okay. it's just, it's yeah. going to be fun. Okay. I'm going to build my kit this year. Heck it's yeah. What about you, nice. Cody? You do a lot of our sound engineering, and you're our bass player. Anything new coming this year on those fronts? Um, well, there is a there is a few things, like in my uh, recording rack, I wanted to fill out that I wanted to get, and uh, just some general upgrades. But for now, the biggest front on that is like cleaning out my studio space. Up, up oh, your my home house studio? Like, yeah, get, getting that cleaned out, too. Because, yeah. yeah. like, even then, if we're... Because, like, you guys have your computers now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys have all that. So we'll be able to send each other stuff. And, like, yeah. for writing process, too, like that. Yeah, that'll make things a lot easier. This was actually the year I finally got this studio locked in. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much to the way I like it. I mean, I'm obviously going to adapt it and change it as I go. Or if I move. But, um... This year, I finally got the home studio I've been picturing and wanting. Yeah. I have space to edit my videos. I have music. I have, you know, the room to the, to record and film our podcast. Heck Couch yeah. back here. You know, it's it's it feels nice to finally have my creative space locked in. Oh, yeah. So I know what you mean on, on getting your studio set up. It's Yeah, because right now I go out there and sit at my desk, and it's all just boxes and trash around me, and it's yeah. like, ugh. Oh. Dude, and sucks. one of the things that I think I love, that I did, I want to add to is the posters. Oh, yeah. Fill your creative <clears throat> area with things you love. Don't worry yeah. about, like, matching, like, a theme. Dude, I got Star Wars, Harry Potter, Disney. Einstein. Einstein. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what I mean? It, it, I just want every Sleeping wall, beauty. every corner. Adventure I look time. At, yeah, I just want it to be things that remind me of yourself. Of, yeah, who I am and yeah. what I'm fighting for, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm a nerd. Yeah, I think we all are. Yeah, I like it, though. I think that term has been redefined nowadays. Yeah, you know, Definitely. nerd is not like, what it used to be. It it's got cool to the point. To it got to the point where people were starting to try and rep their nerd cred. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's like a huge change from being you know, a kid stuck in the trash it's like, can. It's like promoting, like, wanting to be intelligent, you know? A, yeah. lot, of, a lot of the past years has just been, like... Do whatever you want. Yeah. Well, you don't have to, like, you know, really try as hard or I whatever it is. I think one of the things that really uh, changed it is the internet. Yes, yeah. because the smart people are in control. Yeah. The nerds are the ones who are out making things, making money. And now we can communicate with each other. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, there's there's other nerds out there like you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the world isn't controlled by, quote-unquote, cool people. You know what I mean? It's, it, it, you, there's... That's the thing about the internet. It's communication, right? You can communicate with vast amounts of people who are into things like you, and it can make you feel like you're not alone. You know what I mean? And even, like, if nowadays, if you can't operate a computer or the internet, you're at, like, a massive, massive, major disadvantage in life. Actually, yeah. It's only going farther from here. Like, you cannot apply for a job anymore by walking in. Mm Mm-hmm. Nine times it's out of ten, the they internet. will say, we can't accept your resume here. You can only go through our online system. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have ex- access to a computer or the internet, you're like, 
you're you're screwed. Yeah. Like you have to go to like the mom and pa type shops, one of the local stores, and they they'll do the. Or you gotta still, find somewhere like, that has a computer that you can use. That you can use. Yeah, go you to the library or something. It was like one of the McDonald's we used to go to. Yeah, they had a little kiosk had, in there or whatever. It had, yeah, a computer, had a computer, and you could like apply for McDonald's while you're eating. Yeah, like on their really? computer. Really. I want to say that was like the purpose of that computer sitting there. Yeah. So you could like apply. I know they do that at Target too. Really? There's like a little That's area with like smart. some computers, and I always see people like applying for Target there. Isn't that what's crazy? Is the computing power these days is just like everywhere. You don't even oh, need yeah. a cashier anymore. Like not even a second your, thought. Your car is a computer. Yeah. Like like I know we were. Oh, let me go fix that real quick. I know we were born more into the technology age already but i don't know if you guys remember though when we were kids the internet was still very very young yeah. oh yeah i remember having to uh hang up the phone or, or whatever yeah. to to get on the internet you couldn't be on the yeah. phone at the same time you're using the internet so. oh yeah youtube was just getting its start <laughs> 2006 was youtube yeah, yeah. dude oh man i youtube, <laughs> YouTube. dude yeah. i was 10 when youtube really yeah because i was born in 96 so, so yeah maybe 11 too. Yeah. Man, 11 years old when YouTube came out. Who were some of the first YouTubers you guys watched? Dude, I didn't even, like... I never really watched then, YouTube. It, yeah, the YouTuber really wa- didn't even exist. Yeah, because, like, the closest <laughs> thing was, like, Shane Dawson. My favorite. That's who, That's I, would who I was going to say, yeah. But a lot of it was just, like, random collections of weird things. Yes, yeah. That's what YouTube was back then. Like, remember, um... What was it? Stick Chocolate figures Rain. on crack? Chocolate stick figures on crack. There was like 11 of those. 11, <laughs> 11 stick figures on crack videos. Oh, man. Who's yeah, there's like many? a lot. They just kept <laughs> pumping them out. Those were funny. That random like shock humor. Yeah, like or uh, the more modern equivalent of the stick figures on crack would be like the ASDF movie that's on YouTube. What is that? It's, uh, it's a lot. It's basically stick <sighs> figures on crack, but a lot better executed. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I watched Stick Figures on Crack, like, maybe a year ago or something yeah. again, and I was like, wow, like, the production is good, but it felt like it was way better when I first watched it. Oh, yeah, because back <laughs> then it, looks it was like... like it's like, on paint. It was, yeah, it was like flash animation. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. though, man. Man, from the second YouTube came out, people were like, what can and I like, do with this? Dude, what, what's, I think the video considered to be, like, the first viral video on YouTube was the uh, Numa Numa guy. Can't say I don't know what that is. Numa numa a, eh. numa numa numa. That was the first eh. viral video. <laughs> the viral YouTube video. Yeah. Interesting. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's like the the big guy with the headphones on. And he's listening to it's like a uh, a Norwegian song or like some some European country. I'd have to look it up. It's called like Dragos Day or something like that. I'd have to look it up. There's a whole new uh, meaning to viral these days. Oh yeah. You know because. Like I like I was saying earlier, the thing about the internet is communication mm-hmm. is so vast and wide that there's so many pockets of people, right? So you could have a million, like let's say uh, Star Wars nerds, okay? And you have a whole section on YouTube, just a bunch of Star Wars videos getting millions of views, right? Mm-hmm. And then you could have a whole another area of Disney, right? Yeah. And it's just millions and millions of views in Disney, and you have all these little sections. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, when the internet was or YouTube at least, was it getting its start, it was like one video would be viral across everyone's field. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But now, it's not very often that there's a single viral thing that goes out to every single corner. I don't know, though, because there's a few things. Well, no, I I mean, the the way viral works these days, as I'm saying, like each of those pockets have their own viral things, and there's not as many single viral (laughs) things that would go out to all of those pockets yeah, yeah i can know. see that one thing that comes to my mind when you talk about that is the uh like the hot knife that was everywhere that was in every section like beauty vloggers were doing hot knife to their lipstick tubes you know like ev- like any any like section on there you could think of that could capitalize on the hot knife remember um the ice bucket challenge yes mm, but that that's right there that's a little yeah. different though because that had a charity aspect involved with it as well for the ALS Still research. viral though, right? Yeah, but I I, I think that like kind of gave it a boost kind of yeah. thing. But it was it was definitely very viral. 
And you know, that's actually something I don't know is if it started off with the charity aspect or if it like there was the ice bucket challenge and then someone threw in the charity what aspect. What about the condom there? challenge? Oh, is that the one where they put it over their yeah. head? I don't think that one had a charity attached to no, it. No, that one definitely didn't. Maybe oh. Planned Parenthood. And then, <laughs> I don't know. And then the, the worst one, though, that everyone thinks about, of course, that we can't not mention is the oh, Tide yeah. Pod I Challenge. Oh, you were going to say that. But yeah. the interesting thing, I think uh, Matt Pat did Wait, a did good say, film theory video. Yeah, I said can't not mention. Oh. Like, we can't leave it out. I got you. I heard yeah. you were. Double negative. I know it makes things weird. But um, I think Matt Pat did a good video about the Tide Pod Challenge, about how, like, it wasn't really a thing until the news started picking it up. Oh, actually, and I that's I saw what, that video. And that's what made everyone start yeah. doing it. Yeah. Because, like, it was just the news latching on to, like, small incidents. Yeah. And they created the trend. Since we're on the darker aspect of the year, let me just say, too, and I won't go too deep into it, but uh, with shootings... Mass shootings and things? Yes. Like, that. it's become, I don't know, trend is the right word, but it's become um, a trend to not really publicize who the the shooter was, if that yes. makes sense. You know what I, I mean? Yes. Not to show their picture, not to show their name, so we, we're not creating infamous people. Yeah, because that's that what they want the is the reasons. fame. Yeah, yeah. Some some of the reasons for these shootings is people want to go out with a bang like that. They want to go out kicking. Intended. <laughs> yeah, you know they want they wanted they they, they want to see be their remembered. Yeah, they want to see their name way. plastered in a headline. Exactly. Yeah, and so I dig that that became a trend to not even show their picture, not say their name. Well, you know, at least but, it was a trend on YouTube. I don't know if the major, yeah mainstream they yeah, still like, they still. But the, I don't watch much cable. They're news, worse but, about it though, actually on the mainstream. Ah, man, because so what bad. they do is they'll be like alleged and they'll blast them out. So it's like okay, they don't even really know man. if it's the guy or not. And now to the in the court of public opinion. He is now guilty, and he hasn't even gone to court. See, that right there shows to me that the the news is just fighting for views, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's all they care about. And, you know, that's... There, 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 are, some, there are some reporters who aren't like that, but I think it's not the majority. Yeah, like, I think you know that, what I mean? like, what I'm saying is that's what drives them to show the picture of the yeah. shooter. You know, they just, they get numb to it because they're like... Well, this is gonna make people go, "Ooh, who's that?" And, and they actually just caught a guy for like false reporting. What do you mean? Like he would like straight up like make up like he would like not go to places and then write basically fake interviews he did with the people there. Really? And then it got to the point like someone like said because uh, how they caught him was like the, the a journalist he was working with kind of had suspicions. But then, like, someone called that journalist and said, mm -hmm. hey, you know, this story that this guy did, like, he didn't even interview me. Wow. But there, it, it has stuff, like, the, and, like, they were saying, like, the, the, liter the interview literally couldn't have taken place because I wasn't even in town. Like, Man. that kind of thing. Is, is it too much to say that I think journalism kind of needs an integrity check? Yes, like, because like, it, and, and it's almost like there's a pattern to it. Because yeah. like in the early 1900s, the same thing happened with like yellow journalism. What's yellow journalism? It's where like, it's like I've uh, heard that term. They would put out very sensational stories that weren't quite true. Was this the first of clickbait? It w it was very <laughs> clickbait, but they wow. but they you but what they used it a lot for though was like justifying wars and wow. stuff like that, and it took like. There was, uh, I think it was, like, certain reporters basically came out against it and, like, really pushed for, like, for pe for it to go away. That is what helped it. So I think that's what we need nowadays is, like, reporters that we know are honest and have integrity kind mm -hmm. of, like, leading the way to cleaning up the industry. See, what sucks is because I feel like the backbone behind reporting is freedom of speech, right? Yeah. But then you, it, 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 are you okay? Puppy caught. <laughs> but the thing is, where there's good people, there's going to be bad people. Balance. Where there's people that are going to use that freedom of speech for good, there's mm -hmm. people that are going to use that freedom of speech for bad. Oh, yeah. And they're going to say things that maybe aren't true, or maybe opinions that are super outlandish and just to get clickbait. You know what I mean? So I think it's it's so hard. Like, what do you do? You know what I mean? How do you regulate these things? It, yeah. Like, 
for example, and it. I don't know if anyone here at the table. I think you do. You what? watch Philip DeFranco. Philip DeFranco love, show. I love oh, yeah. that news platform. Amazing. If Amazing. The news on the TV could take a page out of his book. You know what Seriously. I mean? Seriously. Like I feel he like he he just he says here's what happened, here's what I think. What do you think? Yes. You know what I mean? And he clearly defines mm -hmm. where those points end and begin. It doesn't feel like he's trying to convince you to be on his side. Yeah. And, th and that's the thing is, I remember growing up, you know, especially when I first moved out and I started to get more into news and that kind of thing. And I would, it, I, I started on YouTube by going to, to different YouTube channels that would talk about current events and news. And that's how I kind of fell in love with Philip DeFranco because I, I just, I got tired of everyone trying to convince me to be on their side. And not I just want to know the facts. Then, I want to develop my own opinion. Yeah. You and then know? Another thing he does that I really, really like that I think he does better than a lot of the mainstream media is like when he gets something wrong. It'll mm. be like the very first thing he addresses in the next video. Yeah. And he'll take like as long as he needs to explain like, okay, this is where I was wrong. This is what really happened. And this is what I think now with the new information. Yeah. And speaking of the new year, can we just say in 2019... It is okay to be wrong. Yes. Like, I feel like people <laughs> yeah. just need... It's okay. Exactly, it is. Especially in today's world, it, we're all going to be wrong every once in a while. Failure is the best teacher. Exactly. Yeah. Failure is the best teacher. And I don't think it's lame to say, hey, you know what? I was wrong, but now I know, and I'm better off for it. Yeah, but th I, I agree with you 100%, but it's like, it's one of those things, again, where it's like a fine wine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like... My mind just, I, my train of thought just completely disappeared. Oh, what we were talking about? <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was that joint, man. Yeah. Smoke another one, Smokey. I know. Yeah, maybe you need another one. That's what it is. <clears throat> no, but we were just talking about, um, now I lost it. So did I. Journalism? <laughs> yeah, or something. <laughs> Crap. I don't know, man. It's okay to be wrong. Oh, yeah. It's, it's okay. Okay, to okay. yeah, it's a fine wine mm -hmm. because it's like there's a balance between holding people accountable and letting them admit their mistake. Right. No, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. When we hold people accountable, like, just stop. Just admit that you're wrong. Yeah. Because it's okay. That's what I mean. Oh, okay. I, I know what like you mean. I feel like we can defeat people trying doing that by healthy by more healthy expressing yeah, exactly. that it's okay mm -hmm. to be wrong yeah we wouldn't have people that would get so upset that would or double down it's this, on it's the yeah. same concept as is don't belittle me like mm -hmm. teach me you know mm -hmm. exactly i'm wrong all the time I'm, I'm sure i say things on a podcast all the time that don't make sense you know what oh, I, mean? yeah. I don't know anything i'm not going to college even i i went to high school and i watched a lot of youtube that's where most of my knowledge comes from you know what i mean and yeah. i'm always willing to learn like i said that's what this year this past year was for me and that's why I, the energy i hope to take into the next year yeah is learning 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 we're going to be and to learn you have to be wrong or at least not know you yeah. know what i mean so i don't know i just wanted to say that it's okay to be wrong yep it yes because we have to learn that's how the human race is going to move forward in 2019 oh yeah mm. 2019 dude oh, it's almost crazy. the 20s it's almost 2020 dude like it's is crazy. it just me or like when you were a kid? We're in the that future. That seemed like an imaginary time that would yeah. never happen. Yeah, we're in yeah. the future right yeah. now. It's like a year away, 2020. And it's trippy to think about like back in the day what they thought now would be like with like all the crazy flying oh, right. cars and people on Mars and stuff. Like dude, just think about like... the way George Lucas designed the Star Wars universe. He thought that's what a futuristic society would look like in another galaxy that took place in the past. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I love it because back then, that's what the future, that's what innovation would look like. To the, I'm pointing over there because I have a Star Wars poster. Oh yeah, that's... But you know what I mean with the walkers and that kind of thing. Like that's what they imagine the future is. But it it's crazy because George Lucas didn't imagine them having cell phones. You know what that's I mean? True. But that's what we have, well, and, we're, and we're all connected so fast and. If you have any question, you can suddenly... Could you imagine if Anakin <coughs> could have just Googled? Oh, dude. When, he, you know, when, he, <laughs> when he's contemplating things, you know, if he could have just said, Hey, Google, what's up with the dark side? Is it, is it really worth it? You know, yeah. I don't know. You go to like a... You could have gotten some uh, opinions. Go to Ask Yahoo. Yeah. Come up like, should I go to the dark side? 
<laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. It's just cr- I th- what I'm trying to get at is it's you. F- it's crazy what the future really brings, and I could only imagine by the time we have kids and our kids have kids, what it's gonna look like, mm-hmm. or have we finally hit that point of stagnation? And but you know the thing is, you know why I think we, like we can never predict yeah. like the future future almost. Our, you know what I mean? It what is, do you mean by the future future? It's almost like you know we can like there's like the future which is and there's like the future what, future like the future. <laughs> you know what okay. I mean? Yeah. So like we can be like okay we can tell from trends what the future is gonna look like, but when we have like this distant idea of the future, I don't think we can ever get it right because it'll be like. What all of our innovation is based off of is solving problems. And usually it's solving the problems that our past innovation has given us. But what do you have to say to history repeats itself? That's definitely very true. And that also comes into a little bit of the it's okay to be wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like. It's because it's okay to be like, like thinking about like Germany. Mm -hmm. They... They put. They will be the first to put out there. That's like we fucked up in World War Two. They mm-hmm. make sure everyone in Germany knows what happened in World War Two. They make sure like that it won't. They, they they try to put down that like it's not gonna happen again. Exactly. Here. They really learn from their mistakes. And see, that's exactly what I mean by can 2019 be the year that we all realize it's okay to be wrong because that's the only way we're gonna move forward. I I just I want people to be able to say hey you know what i thought this be- back then because of these reasons and i have a new perspective now and i mm-hmm. see i was completely wrong yeah you know what i mean and i think we should be able to forgive people too with yeah, with being course. okay to yeah, being wrong comes with forgiveness and you know, i'm not a very religious guy but when it i'm not really religious at all but yeah. <laughs> but you know i do have to say when i when i was religious and growing up they have good Christianity morals. yeah it, yeah I gotta say man the whole forgiveness aspect that's what helps people move forward is when they're forgiven yeah. mm-hmm. and I'm not saying that everything is okay you know I'm not saying go go beat up your neighbor yeah you know exactly. and be like and sorry then just say, yeah I'm sorry yeah. and then it doesn't work you know like I was that. wrong 2019 <laughs> that was 2018. That's not what we're saying. It's like to be wrong. Yeah. New Year's Eve, you beat up your neighbor. Yeah. New Year's Day, New I'm Year, New yeah. Me. I'm sorry. It's all yeah, good. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, for example, I used to believe in religion, right? Yeah. Now I can't say I'm for sure wrong, but I was wrong in the things I believed because it brought me down paths that I didn't agree with. And now I'm I'm willing to look back at my past self and say because it, man, I, I I wholeheartedly believed in that stuff, and no one could convince me that my God wasn't real. But now I look back at myself and it's like Aiden, you didn't really have any proof though, bud. Why are you <laughs> Why are you so angry? Like Why are you so you, angry? You know, and, and now I can look back at myself and say, well, yeah, I was wrong. I I was ignorant. I did not know what I thought I knew. And now as I've gotten older I, I'm, and I'm learning, I can say, you know what? I don't know. I don't know a lot. I don't know much of anything, yeah. but I'm willing to learn. I think, I think one of the hardest things in life is knowing what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Because knowing if you don't, you don't know. know what you don't know, then you'll never know it. Damn. You'll never, you'll <laughs> never take the step to know it because you'll, you don't know that you don't know it. Exactly. So if you have something like, I have no idea that even existed, you're never going to search for it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's okay to not know things. It, it's okay, it's okay, man. A person yeah. that knows everything <laughs> is really a fool because they never give themselves a room to learn. Yeah, interesting. I, I I look at a lot of quotes when yeah. I'm downtown. Yeah, <laughs> but they help me through life. Honestly, they do. Like a lot of them are really good. Like they a, are. You it's, know, I don't know why it's. Just, Quotes work for me better in moments like how you just used that. Yeah, yeah. How I relate like, them in my like mind. We were talking about that, and he said it, and it, like and then it sums it up at and the yeah, end. And it was like, oh, that was bit. good. Yeah. What I can't get into is like when I'm scrolling down on Facebook or whatever, all these quotes that are like hashtag relatable. Uh, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Memes, gifs, all yeah. that stuff. Like it doesn't. If it doesn't relate to the moment i'm in exactly i can't yeah. get into it you yeah. know and, it, it, and like a lot of them are just random quotes i feel like too. if it's like it's yeah. a truly inspiring quote it can yeah. pull it off yeah it like but 
is relevant to you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That's that's what I have to like. Yeah. Or I like if you, if you're gonna use a quote, don't just post like a picture of the words of the quote. Like make a like you know if you're gonna put like make a status or something mm-hmm. saying you know whatever the context of the quote is that relates to words. you. And then put the quote at the, the end. Quote. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. Don't be like the people who will be like, it'll be the the quote and like the curly fancy letters <laughs> and then like the girl with the half turn show on her back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like some some quote about like inner peace and she's just there showing her butt on Instagram. <laughs> Like, no disrespect it. if you do that, hey, but, yeah, I mean, you know, it's your body, do what you will, but don't slap a quote over it, is all I'm saying. <laughs> Unless the quote relays to your butt. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, you know, just, I don't know, especially too, you know, I think we're we're coming into a time where copyright is finally starting, I don't want to say it was never taken seriously, but I feel like more people are standing up for themselves. For, yeah, and yeah. for like the even like the literal things, the uh, littler mm-hmm. things that uh, you don't even think about much, like the word. whole Fortnite being sued over the dances right now. Oh yeah, that's like whole new territory oh, for yeah. copyright. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, I've but what I was gonna about say that. about the copyright thing is with quotes, people don't think of that as like copyright, but in my head. I feel you're like the the person who originally said that it's not a quote unless someone mm-hmm. said it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The person who originally said that, I feel like might be disappointed if you're taking that quote and slapping it on a on a like butt Facebook. picture of yourself oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. just to make yourself seem more deep. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I feel like it's like All right, that's not why I said that. I said that because I wanted other deep thinkers to be able to relate to me you know what i mean i didn't want you to get more likes on your butt picture <laughs> you know what i mean it, so that's what i mean with the whole relating the copyright thing to that for like for example you know if we write a song one day and you know one of our we have some meaningful lyric or something how would we feel if mm-hmm. you know people were completely pulling it out of context just for for likes what the you know? actual term for that because there's a, there's kind of like some weird things with copyright that people don't always fully understand is that like you don't have to formally submit a copyright for you to have copyright. Like I have heard, you know, that. it's like this. Once you have an idea and you have it like tangibly, like I've created this idea. It can't just be like something floating in your head. It has mm-hmm. to be like in the case of music, like an actual recording or so like a piece of paper. In some with, way. Yeah, it has to be like yeah, not so, officially published. But, but like even if it's just a notebook paper with your lyrics written down, mm-hmm. that counts. That makes sense, but, um, because wasn't there a thing going around, not this year, I mean, it, might, it, was probably, it was a few years ago, I think, but with Instagram, like, some people would see a picture they took on Instagram, like, on a billboard that, and, like, yes. some company was using, mm-hmm. like, that kind of stuff. It's like, people are, are like, well, I took that and picture, with, I should get credit. And hey, with that as an example, it'd be like, if they didn't formally apply for copyright, what they could do is they could still send that company a cease and desist letter. And just say, hey, you can't use this, this is mine. What you can't do if you don't formally request it is you can't say, give me all the money you made using my image. Because if you have it formally copyrighted, you can do that. You can yeah. say, give me all your profits that are gained from this image. And the thing is, um, even if like they can't say, like, okay, we didn't sell a t-shirt with your image on it, so we didn't get any money from it. But you, if you say you used it in advertising, so that my image directly like affected yeah, your profit exactly so that that's where like all of the copyright Obviously, stuff gets whatever into company in that was their marketing team saw that picture and said hey that's going to help us sell our product mm-hmm. <laughs> someone made that decision you yeah. know what i mean so, so even yeah, if it, it wasn't sense. even if it wasn't directly making them money it was making them money yeah like you know what i mean like i don't know what term to use so i'm just going to come up with my own copyright brats is what i'm going to say mm-hmm. lot, i feel like people especially people consider musicians to be too uptight about copywriting like you mm. know what i said copyright brats and i think that's not true yeah. I, I don't think that's fair because yeah. if you're saying that man you don't know what it's like to be a musician because yeah. that because you know <laughs> copyright is literally your income yeah it, like depending on your contract if you know if you're how you're doing things like that because like 
like with YouTube videos, for example, you know, with putting songs in them and how yeah. you have to do, be very careful with that because of copyright issues. And you'll get people complaining about that. Like, oh, come on, musicians. Like, we can't use your music in our video. You want to get paid for that? Like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, how much money do you need? Well, no. It's just like the Instagram thing. It's It just doesn't feel right. It feels like a violation when someone is taking your creation. And putting and, it to a different meaning. Yeah, and, 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 and or not even that, just promoting themselves with it without even giving you credit. So it's like they're indirectly giving credit to themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, music. oh, I found this song and put it on my video, so I'm the genius. And You know, the interesting thing about copyright is like, it's not like some crazy number. Like, it can be, depending on what it is, but it's only, like, for copyright, it's, like, 19 cents per, like, copy. So, like, imagine really? CDs. So, you'd get, like, 19 cents per copy sold is your is your copyright, I think, if I remember correctly. Interesting. And then it also comes into play whether you wrote the song or not. Because if you wrote the song, you get more money for songwriter's credits. To the point where it's, like... If there's if there's someone in the band who does all the writing, like mm -hmm. I saw on the it was another Joe Rogan podcast with uh, Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins. Oh, cool! That was a really good one, and he was talking about you know when they first started out, he was the one writing the songs, and so the the record company was kind of like, hey, you know, if you're the only one writing the songs, you know, you get the songwriters credit, you're going to be making more money than them. Oh yeah, and then he was like, oh, it's not a problem. He's like, no, like it it can cause problems, so you know you should share the credit maybe. And then he was like, no, I wrote the songs. I'm going to get the money. Right. And then as they started getting bigger, it started adding up the difference to the point where he was just, it was like a gap between yeah, him and the imagine. rest of the band. Yeah. Just because he was the one who wrote the songs. So, like, the lyrics, mm -hmm. like he's saying? Yeah. See, I don't know. That's, that's weird for us because our songs are like puzzle pieces put together yeah and the, from, from that all point because because how it is with music copywriting music is like you can't copyright a chord progression but you can copyright melodies and lyrics okay so, i didn't, I didn't I mean, understand that part of it okay yeah, that so makes like sense. we're all contributing our own melodies right so it will and like rhythms yeah of course which you can't quite copyright rhythm like there's some instances well, they I can't think. even keep up with me anyway yeah. trying to copy my drums no, I'm just kidding. i think it's just because like what what the the bar they use in most copyright cases is whether like any random person off the street hearing it will confuse it for the other thing interesting hmm. well that that makes sense yeah yeah. And that's why, like, the, it used to be really bad where they would get, like, uh, singers that would sound like certain singers and market it as that singer that's sometimes. Lame. But then that became, like, illegal. Yeah. For very good reason. Yeah. Yeah. I could imagine. Man, we got off in some good uh, tangents this podcast. Yeah, yeah huh? very down the rabbit hole. I'm really excited for 2019, though. Me too. Because I I'm serious. We've been on such a roll this year with our YouTube channel and our music, and I'm so excited about it because, like I said, YouTube is something our band, our group of friends, has talked about for so long. So now we can oh, yeah. incorporate our band with it and creating these videos. It it's awesome. I'm having so much fun. And, you oh, know, yeah. and our, we're, we're starting off the year with good momentum. Yeah. I think would be a good way yeah, to say Yeah, we're slowly it. but surely growing, you know. I think we're at like 20-something subscribers, you yeah. know. But our, our our video views are getting getting up there, slowly yeah. but surely. Mm -hmm. And the point is, we're all having fun. You know what I mean? And that's the key of it. Like, I love these podcasts. We Me all too. just get to come it's in fun. here and talk and yeah. go off on these tangents. Kind of bullshit. That's what this YouTube channel is for. Aside mm -hmm. from the audience, I appreciate everyone that listens and watches. What it what it really is for is a healthy outlet for us. Definitely. You know, it, a healthy outlet for us and something maybe that the audience can, can listen enjoy, to and, and enjoy. They can get a nice little personal yeah. view into what we think about and talking about when exactly. we're uh, not playing music. Exactly. And kind of uh, wrapping all of this up, um, this year we're going to be changing the podcast a little bit in 2019. Yes, that's we, correct. Now that we've we kind of got a good flow with it. We, we're thinking we want to go down to more one topic per podcast so we can really sink into it. Yeah, and that, that, that doesn't mean uh, it's going to get shorter. Oh, it not just at all. means we're going to get more in depth. Yeah, so we can get deeper, 
We don't have to worry about time, you know, because mm -hmm. usually we're trying to do two to three topics for every yeah. podcast. Hey, maybe that might leave more time for some little board game action in between things, like <laughs> yeah. how we've done in the past. Yeah, yeah, man, we, we got to do another game in 2019. Yeah. That was fun. The, what was it? Betrayal? At House on the on Hill. House yeah, we got to do like a full game of that. That was good. That's a really good point. podcast. That was really good. Yeah, I think that was one of my favorite podcasts. That was a yeah. fun one. Well, before we end it, I want to wish anyone and everyone happy holidays. Yep. I hope you guys have an amazing new year. Please be safe. Oh, Please yeah, make definitely. good decisions. If you good drink decisions. on if you drink Uber, Uber, tonight, Uber. then yeah, Uber, designated driver or something, just do not yeah. drive under the or influence. Or if you smoke. You or know? if you smoke. Yeah. If you're yeah. under the influence at all, do not drive. Please. Yeah. Like I me being an anxious guy myself. I hate driving because I'm just so scared of other drivers. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Me too. So just don't be that guy, man. I don't, I don't care if you think, like, oh, you know, I'm more focused when I'm on. You're like, I'm good at it. I've practiced. Nah. Like, nah, you're going to crash and kill someone or yourself or both. And you can't control everyone else out there, so you might as well not mess with your reaction time. And, hey, if any of you, if any of your friends are trying to, to drive after doing any partying, just be like, hey... Take their keys, be like, hey, I'll give you a ride home if you yeah. haven't been drinking. Yeah. You know, just let them stay the night. Yeah. <laughs> Something. <laughs> Something. <laughs> so, yeah, Don't... 2019, be safe, yeah. okay? Be safe. Be safe, everyone. Well, anything else from you, gentlemen? Um, no. Oh, uh, on Facebook and Instagram, <laughs> at Justice Band. On Twitter, at Injustice We Stand. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that was the last podcast of 2018. And forever. And forever. No, just <laughs> Man, that would have been one hell of a cliffhanger. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you right, should everyone. cut it right there. Well, maybe. That, that would we just be know. too sad. And yeah, then, no. and then it, everyone would be like, wait, are they coming out with another one? Are they They'd not? probably just not even watch this anymore. We no. for sure will be coming back 2019. Yeah. Better, stronger, and ready to rock and roll. Harder, better, no, faster, no. stronger. Yes. yes. Well said, Cody. So, and on that note, I think we'll wrap it up.